Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining. Get more done. Go from brainstorming to results with the brain. My name is Matt Caton. I'm the Director of Customer Solutions here at the Brain Technologies, and I'm joined on today's webinar with brain specialist Patrick Thompson. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Great, and we've got a really, really great webinar that we're very, very excited about uh, presenting today. Typically, we're presenting the brain and using the brain for file management, information management, mind mapping, and today's focus is really about brainstorming, but actually getting some results with that brainstorming. So we're going to be showing a lot of different examples, different techniques, um, and actually different brains, different sample brains that are available to you that you can download and actually install. All of the brains, almost all of the brains that I'll be demoing today can actually be downloaded and uh, used as either as sort of a sandbox, something to play around with to get familiar with the technology, or as a seed for growing and evolving your own brain, all on the topics of brainstorming. So during the course of the call today, again, the GoToMeeting panel is open, and Patrick will be monitoring the question panel. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to chat them, uh, type them in. And at the end of the demo today, I'll absolutely be certain to circle back, and we'll take a few of those questions and maybe show you examples of some of the topics that we're covering today. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to start with a really great brain um, that is what we call the brainstorming brain. And actually, you have very, very easy access to this brain, thought for thought, word for word, as it appears here on my screen. When you install the brain, there are actually a series of templates that you can use to get started. And you can simply click on File, and select to begin a new brain. And as you can see, there's an existing list of brain templates. And the brain that I'm using today, I simply typed in my brain name, which is brainstorming, and selected the brainstorming template. And this is the result. I have pre-built thoughts, pre-built tags and types. We'll be talking about those features a little bit later today. But I can go ahead and get started with a pre-built brain that, once again, I can use just to play around with the technology or actually start modifying, deleting thoughts that I don't need, editing thought names, changing content wherever I see fit. So let me first take you through a quick review of this particular brain. So a couple of different categories, and, and the key thoughts that I want to go to first are thinker, thinkers and methodologies. So these are different people that play sort of a key role in the idea of brainstorming. Of course, we have Alex Osborne, who wrote a book um, uh, a while back called Applied Imagination that sort of got the movement rolling on brainstorming and how to, how to go about successful brainstorming, brainstorming with results, not just sitting down uh, with a pen and a napkin, but taking that much further and getting results from your ideas. So we've got a lot of great um, samples of his techniques. And the most important one, if I click down to the area of Osborne's brainstorming rules, he has four basic rules. And I'm going to be referring back to these a couple of times during the webinar today. The first and most important is focus on quantity. Notice that is not a typo. It does not say quality, but focusing on quantity. Get your ideas out there. Get them into the brain, whether they're good or bad or however crazy they may seem. There's components of, of those ideas that when in put into play with other ideas or once you work through these other steps, you'll decide that, hey, that's not so out of reach, whether you're expanding your, your business and some of the crazy ideas are opening a market in Asia um, or overseas, or whether it's just a more personal brain. You've bought a new property and you've got a huge lawn and how am I going to take care of these lawn, this lawn? Am I going to buy a tractor? Am I going to hire someone? Am I going to pay my kids? Am I going to buy a goat? You can put it all in the brain and slowly over t time evaluate these ideas to come to the best solution. So no filtering at this point. Get those ideas into your brain. 
And, of course, that goes right along with withhold criticism. Don't think, oh, that's just, that's just too crazy. Uh, that's too far-reaching for my business. I'm sort of at this level of my business right now. I don't have the money or the funds um, or the, the, the uh, workers available to me or even the knowledge on how to open an Asian market. Um, so I'm not even going to put that thought in my brain. That's, this is not the time for that. Get the idea in there, withhold criticism, and wait for that review process to see how close you just may be. Um, welcoming unusual ideas, once again, no matter how hard they seem, get them in. And finally, combine and approve. And that's when you go in and start evaluating. Here are all my ideas, and now let's take a look at what really can work and what can't. And once again, there are methods to approaching uh, the ways you actually combine and approve your ideas. And so I'm going to break away now from Alex Osborne, and I'm going to navigate down into David Allen. David Allen just recently uh, wrote a book called Getting Things Done. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, today's class is, is actually created because of those of us at the brain reading the book and David Allen himself actually using the brain. Um, and there's a link that I'll share with you a little bit later in today's webinar uh, where we actually interviewed David Allen and went through David Allen's brain and talked about how he uses the application and different features that are important to him. And David Allen's GTD, Getting Things Done, you can see he's written, written several books. Getting Things Done is, is one of the books and maybe uh, arguably the, the most popular and the most relevant. Uh, but as you can see, I've got an area of uh, GTD's methodology. And there's a GTD workflow. Uh, once again, we're collecting, then we're processing information. We're organizing it, reviewing it, and then finally you do the information. And of course, how you approach these steps are, are up to you. And in the GTD book, if you ever happen to pick that up, um, he breaks down different ways of, of handling those different workflows or those different processes. I'm going to jump in right now and talk about the horizons of focus. And you'll see that I've actually used my horizons of focus in other brains that I've created, a brain that I'll be going to in just a bit. I have these same thoughts there, and I'm attaching real content to them. And this is really a way of saying, um, and, and uh, what do I have that needs to get done today versus tomorrow versus the week, month, et cetera. Now, you can label your thoughts that way. There's no right or wrong, but I really, really like David Allen's process of putting items up front on the runway. If something's on the runway, if you're thinking of yourself as sort of an airport controller, but rather than planes, you have projects, whatever's on the runway garners the most attention. That's what you're currently focused on with, with laser accuracy. This is what needs to get done. Then we have 10,000 feet away. Those are active projects. I need to deal with them sooner rather than later, uh, but the option that is there to push those back, put out the fires that I have right in front of me first before I actually start attending to my, my other loftier goals. And as you can see, it just simply works its way back. My 20,000 um, feet areas of responsibility, something that I do need to, to keep focused and check in on from time to time, we go into 30,000 feet, our one- or two-year goals, 40,000, 50,000, our life goals, et cetera. So that's a really great way of taking all of these different ideas and, and rolling back to that idea of opening and expanding an Asian market. You know, maybe I'm not going to do that tomorrow, but after I review this process, I find I know more people that can help me. I find that the budget is there. The market is there after I do a little bit of research. Um, I'm going to move that from a life goal, and it's sort of, sort of going to work its way up the pro up, you know, through this process of, hey, this could be accomplished in the next five years. If I get a few more things done, I'm a year away from opening that, and I move it forward in the process. And you can always change where your thoughts lie within uh, the brain that you're creating. And I'll do that in just a moment as well. So a couple of just areas that I wanted to share with you in, in this brain. Uh, you can see we've got other um, areas of breaking down your, your 
brainstorming, how you actually focus on solutions rather than problems, breaking down the dream into different components, and those are there's subcategories there as well. So a lot of different areas to investigate in this sample brain that once again you can install and download right away as soon as you open the brain you can actually create a new sample brain and check this out right on your desktop just click on file new brain once again and utilize this brainstorming template once again you'll see that i've actually imported this brainstorming template into other brains that i have as well and i'm going to jump into uh, into one of those now actually before i do that i'm going to go into this particular brain and uh, goal-directed thinking. I'm going to actually start changing some thoughts as if this were my brain that I was currently focused on. Um, you can see I've got different areas of how I define success. What is the success of my project going to be? Um, I've got ways of defining my obstacles and uh, processes for project planning. So whether I break it down by week or I create action items or checklists and so forth. So a lot of different samples and ways to go about your different projects here. I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to do exactly like I mentioned earlier. I'm going to start modifying this brain as if it were my own brain and under define success, what if my project goals uh, should look like this? Well, let's go ahead and create and rename one of my project goals. We're going to say that this is my new marketing project. So I've got a new marketing project for my business that I'm going to be working on, and I'm going to create some high-level subcategories. Dropping documents into this, uh, this particular thought as much as I'd like, uh, but in the end, I may have dozens or even hundreds of thoughts underneath this new marketing project thought. And I want to break down to, uh, to have a couple of key categories so I can manage and keep track of my brainstorming process. Um, and I'm subdividing these ideas into an area for branding. And notice that I like to simply click and drag off of a thought to create a new child thought. Those of you that are new to the brain, I realize today is a more advanced class, so we're assuming that you know a, a bit about creating brains, creating thoughts, and so forth. But if you're new to the brain, notice that it's very easy to create new thoughts. And so I click and drag off of what we call the jump, or excuse me, the child gate to create a new child thought. So I click and drag, and I can type in another area for where I keep track of my budget. And just hit the green check or enter to create that new thought. I can also create jump thoughts. So I'm going to assemble a team to manage my marketing project. So rather than dragging below the active thought, I'm going to drag to the side. This creates a jump thought. So something closely related but isn't a subcategory. And this is the team that I will be assembling. And up above, we can attach this thought to other parent thoughts. So the active thought in the center, we have a parent thoughts above, child thoughts or subcategories down below. Our related items are our jump thoughts. So a new parent thought might be an existing thought that I already have. Right now I'm in phase one, and so I just type in the letter one, and all thoughts that contain the letter one show up in my list. These are the existing thought lists. It helps you reduce clutter and duplications of, of thought names. Um, so I'm going to put this on the runway. This is something I'm currently focused on. I need to be laser pinpoint precise on getting this new marketing project for my business off the ground. So I'm going to link this to that existing thought runway. So I, when I come down to my horizon to focus, what do I need to focus on? First thought I'm going to look at every day when I check into the office is going to be this runway thought. What's on the runway? Maybe it's calling a client. Maybe it's uh, signing a contract. And in this case, it's designing this marketing project that's going to get the word out about my new business. And I've got a third category down below. So I want to create a thought for my rollout. So the process of, of actually getting this thing off the ground and getting it out there. And so let's start right off the bat with bringing in, in some just existing content. I'm going to click on my budget, and I've got some existing documents that I need to bring into my brain. 
And once again, I can come back and categorize these later, but I've got my company overview that I need to keep track of. I can simply click and drag that PDF right into the brain. Um, and here I've got an Excel spreadsheet on my funding. I'll bring that in as well. Now notice when I drag and drop into the brain, you can see here through the edge of the uh, screen, I've got my folder on the left, I'm dragging and dropping, and this creates a shortcut to that particular thought. That's the default for the brain. I can also hold down the control shift key. So let's say I have my forecast, control shift, and I drag and drop this forecast. That actually moves the file into the brain. So a couple of different options for you for getting content into your brain. If you have that existing content, just start dragging and dropping. You can also open up your brain. And since we're talking about a lot about the different features that the brain has today, we can go up to options and into preferences. And on the user interface tab, I can set the difference to from dragging and dropping into the brain to be a linked file, to be a file that's been moved into the brain. Now the reason really quickly why we have these different options is because no two environments are ever the same. You may be working on a corporate, in a corporate environment and you've got access to a shared X drive where all your colleagues have access to shared files as well. A shortcut may be the best option. So you're not moving those files onto your local machine out of that shared directory. Um, whereas if you're on the road, you're traveling with your laptop and you need access to these budget documents and finance documents wherever you are, whether you have in, uh, internet con connectivity or not, and therefore an internal attachment may work best. I typically go with internal attachments in all my brains that I create. Um, and that way when I sync my brain to the cloud or take my laptop with me, I've got access to those documents. But again, the choice is yours. And you can always go back, right click on an attachment to move a file out of the brain uh, or on an internal attachment. I can right click and move, or this one moves the file out of the brain on the internal attachment. Here's my shortcut. I know it's a shortcut because there's that little black arrow icon there when I right click, I can move the file in or actually copy the file in. So the original stays in its location and I have my own copy um, on my machine. And again, those choices are yours. So of course we can bring all those existing documents in and organize them and change them later. For whatever reason, I always want to refer back to this funding document. I can even click and drag and move that over to the left as a jump thought. So it really stands out in a grouping, a large grouping of child thoughts. I can move a thought or two that I most frequent up to, uh, to be a jump thought. That's one option you have to make a thought stand out at any time. And let's go into branding as well. Once again, I'm just brainstorming right now. What is my new website going to look like for my company? I've got a couple of other websites I like. I just want to start dragging and dropping and bringing them in, and then I'll take the time later to go through those processes that we looked at to evaluate. Is this something I can do? Is it something I know how to do? Or is it something that I can afford to do with the amount of programming that goes into it? So I have some web pages open, and let me just start bringing those right into the brain. Here's a website I found recently. I'm not even sure what the website is about. I just love the playfulness and the interactive website. You can see when I mouse over thoughts, different actions take place in the menu. I really like that. It's a lot of fun. Maybe it's too busy. I don't know. We'll evaluate later. This is just brainstorming. So I'm going to drag and drop this website right into the brain. And I've got a few different websites. Uber, I just like the big, bold graphics that they have, very friendly. I drag and drop that right into the brain as well. So I can go over and over with all these different websites that I really enjoy, drag and drop into the brain, and at a later date, I'll come back and start that evaluation process. Um, so once again, very easy to drag and drop existing files, easy to drag and drop web pages into the brain, and let's go to this rollout. Let's say I'm going to have my press release uh, to announce my new company with this great new website and all of the um, social media blitz that's going to go along with it. We've got a Twitter account, feed, uh, Facebook, all of the above. So um, here is my media announcement. And thank goodness uh, the brain has spell check. I left an N out there so I can just utilize that spell check. 
create this new thought. Now, in this example, there's nothing to drag and drop into the brain. I don't have this existing document yet. So in this case, I want to right-click, and I can create new files in the brain from scratch. So I right-click, and I select to add an attachment. And I've got a drop-down list of possible files that I can choose from. Now, if you don't see what you're looking for here, if it hasn't been populated, or you'd like to populate your own list with custom company letterhead or graphics or forms that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, you can just click the Templates button and follow this on, these on-screen instructions. It's going to open a directory, and anything you bring into that directory will be easily accessible. So in this case, I just want a Word document. I can open up my Word and start using my welcome speech or start creating my welcome speech. Welcome. So I don't even know what I want to say yet, but I'm going to go ahead and save that. And brainstorming isn't all about just, um, just creating the brain and the ideas and mapping out the process. There's a lot of documents that go along with announcing or finance documents. How am I going to control these, these different items? And right here in the brain, we can have access to all of these different files. I'm right now brainstorming on just my media announcement. So I might even want to go down to the Thought Tool tab, and I'm going to keep this version. Let's say I worked on it for a day or two. I've got a couple of chapters. I need to start whittling it down. I don't want to simply overwrite it. So using the brain buttons, I'm going to copy and paste and make this my media announcement. I'll rename it so I can keep track. Uh, media number two. So now I'm brainstorming just in, in Word. Oh, I left off the dot .doc. I'll rename that. So my brainstorming process has sort of shifted a little bit, and I'm working on this document, but the brain also keeps track of version control. So <clears throat> all the different versions of this document that I create over time while I'm working it out, I can keep track of those and refer back to old revisions and, and copies that I had previously as well. So that's a great idea of how we can start getting information into a brain, whether it's a brain we're creating from scratch or, as in this case, a template uh, that the brain created for me. I'd like to take you now into another sample. We've got a brain called the Projects Brain, My Projects. Now, this is a brain. Let me jump back to the home thought. This is a brain that you can actually download a copy of from our website. So it's not built right into the actual brain itself. But if you go to uh, www.thebrain.com slash apps, A-P-P-S, there are a list of different brains used for different topics. Uh, whether we've created a brain to manage our business goals uh, or our business process or our call center, in this case, just managing projects. We've got really creative brains on writing projects and education, as well as very specific business-oriented IT mapping examples. So a lot of different samples that you can download to, again, help you brainstorm on a topic that you're familiar with. In this case, it's simply project management. Whether the project is for work or for business, there are some great examples in this particular brain on how to manage a project. And the first example I'd like to share with you is actually how to categorize the different projects using thought types and tags. So previously, in the last brain that we took a look at, if a thought falls into a category of this particular brain is um, a brain that is going to be used for uh, this project is actually in phase one, and then we want it to go to phase two. We had those set up as actual thoughts. So we had on the runway versus 10,000 feet. If my project had shifted from one to the other, I can simply unlink and reconnect it to another thought. I'll do that really quickly. Let's say uh, under personal projects, I was on this thought earlier, my kitchen renovation uh, let's say kitchen renovation was under phase one. I can create a thought. And all my phase one, this thought doesn't exist yet, so there's phase one. Now let's say we've got the budget. My wife and I, we're ready to go ahead with the kitchen project. Now we're starting to interview contractors, et cetera. That for us is phase two. Well, I'll just create the phase two thought. And if I just rearrange my screen just a bit here, you can see that it's now falling under phase one and phase two. No, 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 it can only be in one phase at a time. 
I simply right click between phase one and my kitchen renovations and select unlink. So I've moved that through from phase one to phase two. So that's one option that you have on how to keep track of these different categories of, of urgency or where it is on your runway in the GTD method. Um, another way that you can do that is using thought types and tags. So in this brain, I'm actually going to unlink this from phase two as well. And I'm going to classify my kitchen renovation project as a thought type. So this particular brain, once again, you can download it from our website. Um, this particular brain has a category of, or a, a, a couple of different projects down below. So is it a completed project, a green lighted project, a hot project, or a pending project? So it starts off as just something that my wife and I are talking about doing. It's a pending project. Notice under pending project, I also have, well, this is just an example thought. I'll unlink that. I'm also working on a company brochure. Well, now I'm also working on my kitchen renovation project. So I can link it to the pending project thought. I can also right click and assign my thought type that way. So let's say my wife and I decide, yes, we have the budget, we've done our research and the documents down below, and we've done our brainstorming, we're ready to, to narrow things down to find a contractor to see what really is going to work. This goes from a pending project to a green lighted project. That's sort of my way of saying phase two. It's green light. The next phase is going to be a hot project, meaning it's, it's actually in progress. And then it goes from there to a completed project. Um, let's say, for example, it's a stalled project. This is something that, oh, I do have a stalled project. I'll create a new, um, I'll say canceled project. I want to create a new thought type just to show you how this is done. So we decide to green light this project, we interview some contractors, we take a look at the budget, forget about it. It's not happening this year, not unless I take some classes at Home Depot and figure out how to do it myself. So we're going to cancel the kitchen renovation project. Now I don't have a thought type yet for, uh, for canceled projects, so let's go ahead and create one. I'm going to click on the green plus on the thought types tag. I can also right click up above and go to thought type, new type. So there's a couple of different ways you can create these new thought types. I'll create a new type, thought type called canceled project. Now it goes to the canceled project thought in the brain. Notice it has this little halo around it that's signifying that this is a thought type thought that other thoughts can be connected to. Canceled project, what do we want all of my canceled projects to look like? Notice with thought types, that uh, thoughts were changing from green to orange to with these little graphics and so forth. I can set that up to visually identify what, in this scenario, a project or a stage of a project looks like. So for all of my canceled projects, I'll click on the Thought Tool tab and I'll give them a color. So canceled, obviously, is going to be red. And let's give it an icon. I can right click to select a thought icon, or I can click on the plus sign down on the thought tool tab. Two different ways to get to the brain's icon library. All of my canceled projects are going to have the icon of, we can find something really cool, but let's go into business, canceled project. I can just have a red light that stands out. I like this little badge here with a red cross, red sort of slash going through it. That is going to say, absolutely, do not pass go for me. That is a canceled project. So notice that the thought inherited those properties. Anytime, let's say my scuba diving days have come to an end, they really have. Uh, now that I have kids, I've got too many other things going on, no time to scuba dive. So my project of creating maybe a new scuba school is a uh, back burner. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Let's set that thought type to be a canceled project. So two personal projects, boohoo, uh, that I've just canceled. But um, the icon stayed there because I created a custom icon for this thought. I'm not going to get too much into detail about that, but there's a hierarchy of how the brain chooses its icon. This particular thought had its own custom icon, so it's going to show that icon if I cancel that, if I turn that off. Yes, I do want to remove that little diving thing. Now it's going to show the icon for its thought type. 
So rather than just on the individual thought, the individual thought has no icon, so it shows its thought type, which is my little red badge. So um, that's how we set up our thought types, a nice visual way to identify um, what stage of a project is in our brainstorming process. This one got canceled halfway through, so I changed the thought type. And another thing that I wanted to share with you, too, are thought tags. Thought tags I typically think of as being attributes of a thought. A um, thought type is a category. A thought tag is an attribute. You can only have one thought type for a thought. So what type of project is it? Is it green light? Is it completed? Is it canceled? There's only one stage or phase that it can be in. So that's the thought type. However, the thought tags, uh, notice that I've got just a couple of different thought tags here. I want to create these from scratch. Um, let's say under our kitchen renovation properties, kitchen designs, uh, we were looking at, obviously, faucets. I'm going to click a semicolon, a, a great shortcut if you're creating lots of individual thoughts at one time. Uh, area for faucets, I'm going to research the tub, the sink, tile, paint, it goes on and on and on. So here are all of the different uh, design areas that we're focused on and faucets. Let's say my wife has a really keen eye. She wants to find a nice ergonomic, a modern faucet. This is going to be my wife's project that she's looking at. And so I'm going to create a new thought tag for my wife's name is Laura. So I'll say Laura. And notice that the thought tag by default actually shows up in the brain. So under faucets, I can see that's categorized or, or tagged as Laura. This is also one of our areas where we're going to spend the most on our budget. So this gets another tag for budgets. Hi. And in contrast to that, the, the paint. Paint something that we can do ourselves. We can figure that out. I'm going to create a thought tag for it, which is budget low. So you can see sort of the contrast there. Faucets has two tags associated with it. It's a category that Laura is focused on, and it's one of our high budget items. The paint we both need to agree on. Um, so that's something that we need to collaborate. I'll let her pick the sink faucet that's going to be fine, but I want to help design the, the color. Um, so I'm going to also, on the paint thought, check this as being Laura and also create a, yet another tag for Matt. So you can see three thought tags associated with this particular thought. Now, as this brain continues to evolve and grow and I want to find all the things that uh, Laura is, is focused on, so think of this as you can use this as in your business environment, what's Bill working on? What's Dave working on? Or what's a high priority project? What's a low priority project? Tags are another option of classifying these thoughts that would typically not be linked to one another. Let's say Laura was also, let me go back to uh, my home thought, and let's say Laura and I work together. She's uh, helping me with my marketing campaign. And she's writing all of my ad copy for my marketing campaign. I'm going to set up the thought tag Laura there as well. So once again, returning to the Laura tag, there's three responsibilities she has. Picking out the faucet for our new kitchen design, uh, picking out the paint colors for the kitchen, and finally writing some ad copy for our new business marketing project. So three thoughts that would typically not be connected to one another, um, but obviously – uh, they, they share a common thread, and that's that it's Laura's focus. So I have created a tag to associate with all of those thoughts. And, of course, something else that I wanted to point out at any time, you can always go back and let's say we reassign this from Laura. Now this is my responsibility or Bill's responsibility or someone else. So I can simply uncheck Laura and check Matt. So you can just simply change the attribute of the tag very, very easily at any time. And speaking of change, you can also delete thoughts at any time. I'm not sure if anyone really noticed this, but I actually did it on purchase 
on purpose, excuse me. Uh, I'm going to go back really quickly to my kitchen designs. And notice that I added under the kitchen design something that goes into my bathroom remodel, and that's a tub. Of course, we are not going to have a bathtub in the sink. So once again, that just came out during brainstorming. We need this, 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 this. You're going to make mistakes, and no filter is needed in that first uh, stage, as we talked about earlier, no filter. So I just threw a bunch of ideas out there, and now when we're reevaluating, we see, why is tub there? So once again, I can relink tub over to bathroom design if I have that thought, or I can right-click on tub and select to forget. Um, I don't need to categorize it as, as a phase two, phase three, not going to happen, whatever. I can do that if I want to archive that information it was quite clearly a mistake. So I just want to forget that thought. So I've removed it from appearing within the brain. Now, if I want to delete that in the brain, we can go up to our options and open up our forgotten thought list. The forgotten thought list in the brain is really like your recycle bin. Everything that you put into the brain, um, when you forget it, it's actually still there. It's just not appearing in the structure of the brain. So it's in the recycle bin. So it can be brought back at any time. I can click to remember this thought, or I can select all, or just one by one select a thought and click on delete. Are you sure? Yes. So I've now permanently deleted that tub thought from my brain. So a couple of, of features of, once again, going back and editing all of that content that you're adding into the brain. And uh, I've got one more example that I want to share with you, and that is in my own personal brain. We've shared a couple of business-type solutions, and I've shared with you sort of a recreational-type solution. I'd like to actually show you a real live brain. This is my brain, and I demo this from time to time particularly on Fridays on the Brain 101. I give people a quick tour of my brain. And just because I am brainstorming about just ideas that I have, uh, just recreationally, I like to open up this brain. I call it my Laura Bloom brain. And so this brain is all about me. Anything that I'm interested in, I'm clicking and dragging and just dropping it right into the brain. I need to be a little bit careful about what I click on here because there is a lot of personal information. All my information is right here in this brain. But a few areas I want to share with you is, number one, I am an amateur woodworker. So I like making things out of wood. You can see I've got a little checkbox of ideas that I have, things that I can build. Uh, my son recently mentioned that he wanted to build a toboggan. Let me spell that correctly. So I just added toboggan. I haven't done it yet. I've never built a toboggan, but now it's in just this quick little checklist that I have there in my lower bloom furniture area of my brain. So anytime someone says, hey, have you ever tried building a, and recently someone did, giant Jenga. I love the game Jenga, and you can actually build a giant Jenga game out of two by fours. So this would be a really fun project for me and my two sons to do. So I'm going to add a new checkbox, and I am going to keep this in my real brain. Giant Jenga. I think that's how you spell it. Yeah. So a giant Jenga game with two by fours. So I simply add that as a checkbox. If I want to make that its own thought, I can definitely do that. So that would be fall under like outdoor, and I can create a new thought. So there's different ways that you can add content in. I would do this because most likely I'm going to find instructions. Maybe there's certain measurements, certain ways that it needs to be done, or certain wood that needs to be used, and obviously I'll just attach that information as we go right here into the brain. Notice I've done that. Outdoor chairs, I've got a couple of just web links that I really like that I can utilize to, to reference whenever I'm building outdoor chairs and benches. These are designs that I like, so anytime I see something I like, I simply drag and drop it right into the brain. Another area of this brain that is particularly fun for me because it's a current focus, a current project that I'm working on, is here in my VW area. I'm remodeling an old VW bus, and I'm keeping both a list of all the parts. And notice here I'm utilizing those thought types. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is because the thought type actually identifies 
whether the project is complete or not. These are all the different parts that I either need to purchase, I have purchased, but haven't installed, or I've purchased and installed. So obviously the little happy smiley face, that means I've partially completed that project. I have the new calipers in my possession, haven't put them on yet. You can see the emblem and the engine that I've rebuilt. Um, that has the little cool guy with the glasses. That means I've completed that project. And of course, I've got uh, information and links and websites and video tutorials down below. But the, all the information about the project is there. The process, whether it's completed or not, what's behind the eight ball, that means I'm currently focused on making that part of the bus work, etc. all identified with all of these thought types. I can also organize my brain by thought types rather than alphabetically. So notice here we're going brakes, clock, the cocoa cor uh, floor mat, custom roof rack emblem, alphabetical list, right? If I want to group all of my thought types together, I can right click on the background and select to arrange thought by type. And now no notice that I'm starting to organize all of this brainstorming. These are all the things and parts that I need and think of. I create a thought for each individual one. Now I'm grouping them according to their thought types. I've used that thought type and I can use that thought type for you know high priority, low priority. In this case, it's whether it's done, halfway done or 0% complete. So I get a nice sort of lay of the land of the, the brain that I'm creating. And I also want to share with you that it's really important when we are brainstorming to sometimes get the big picture of our information. Now for this example, I'm going to jump into another business brain. So I'm going to jump over to my um, eSolute, or I'll just jump into my my brain. So really quickly, let's put all of these components into play. Let's say I'm working on uh, my GTD project, so my getting things done, collecting information, processes, organizing uh, information. Notice I've got thoughts under these. Action items for this week um, are something that I'm working on organizing. So I'm booking some upcoming business travel. I've got my year-end staffing that I'm working on. And let's say I'm also, and this falls, as you can see, under phase one, runway. Um, so every day when I check what's on the runway, my action items for the week, they're always going to be on the runway. I need to get them complete. So let's say also my action items for this week is to create a new, I'll just say HR field guide, or I think I'd, I'd call it a HR manual for 2017. So I'm working on this new HR manual for 2017. Let's start using all of those features that we've talked about today. First off, we can categorize this. What phase of the process is this? It's an action item for this week. Let's say we get a few things done. We add a new document down below. So I click to add a new Word document. I spell a few things out. That's great. I've got it started, my HR manual. It's no longer an action item that needs to be done this week. Uh, I've got it started, but it needs to be done by 2017. So I'm actually going to move this over to my, we'll say my 20,000 foot areas of responsibility. It needs to get done this year. So I'll just double check, double click, and that falls under my 2, uh, 20,000 areas of responsibility. I'm going to remove it, unclick from action items. So I've moved the location. Helping me on this, I'm going to start assembling my team. So Vicki is an existing person that's going to be working on this particular project. Um, also, I have an area for all of my HR information, obviously, human resources. So I want to link this to human resources. So regardless of how I'm thinking about my information, whether I'm coming in from my uh, areas of focus, so I've got my items on the runway, my action items, my 10,000 feet area, um, I've got my 2016 client review that needs to get done, a marketing launch, et cetera, and now 20,000 feet, my HR manual. That might be how I'm thinking about it, just reviewing all my different areas of focus, or maybe I'm just thinking, gosh, what needs to get done in HR today? So I come down through a different area. I go through my work, organizations, human resources. You can see I have a whole 
complete staff list all mapped out in this area of my brain. Uh, but also under human resources is my new manual that I'm working on. And as I continue to work on this project and, and evolve it, I can add new references, documents, uh, graphics that I'll be using in the manual, as children, child thoughts down below. And finally, what I want to share with you is that we can also, in addition to linking to these categories, I can start assigning thought types and tags. So let's say this is going to be my HR manual, but it's currently security level one. I'm keeping track of everything that is security level one, two, three. As you can see, a completely different array of tags in this particular brain, as you saw previously. The tags are really up to you. I can also have action items used as tags. So let's say I really need to talk to Rick about making sure that I'm checking all the boxes. Am I meeting our corporate standards with how I'm writing this HR manual? Let me talk to Rick about that. Rick's a really busy guy. I can't always get a hold of Rick at the uh, when I pick up the phone, sometimes I leave a message. And when Rick calls me back, the first thing I'm going to do is click on this Talk to Rick. I've got two action items. We need to talk about Tanya. What do we need to talk about? Well, obviously, that would all be um, presented to me in my notes down below. And I need to talk about the HR manual. And if Rick hands it off to another process uh, saying, hey, it looks good to me, but you better check with Shelly, I am going to, on this thought, uncheck talk to Rick and create a new action item. Talk to Shelly. So once again, when I get that call from Shelly, one urgent item, we need to talk about our HR manual for 2017. So I'm utilizing a lot of the different features that we, uh, that we utilize today. And finally, I now also want to get the big picture of my information, how my organization is really fitting together. So even regardless of what thought I'm on, I'm just going to stay on the human resources thought, and I'm going to go into my view. And notice that I can go into an outline view. So anytime I click on a thought, I can select, and let's minimize our tool tabs down below. There's a button to do that in the upper right-hand corner of the brain. And this coincides right along with the topic of today, brainstorming, idea generation, and now execution. So I need to evaluate how my business is working and, and fitting and see if I need to change up my focus on any of the different topics. So I'm going to expand marketing. And I've got a lot of great things happening in marketing, but I want to talk about my corporate branding, so I expand that thought as well. I'm working on a home page design. I almost forgot that I had a new home page. I need to move this thought into my onto my runway. So I'm going to click and drag and start typing in the thought name. There it is, level one runway. So I've move that over onto my current runway. And I'm getting there, again, through what we call the outline view within the brain. I'm broadcasting now, just so you know, on a very low resolution today so that there's not a lot of pixels going through the pipe. Um, so I don't have a lot of screen real estate. I've got an extra monitor uh, over here with a lot more room. Obviously, the more room you have, the more you can expand the brain that you've created. So on a very large monitor, this becomes a very powerful tool. You can also turn on some features. If you go into Options and Preferences, you can go into your uh, use UI tab, User Interface, turn on your mouse wheel resizing or the resizing circle. I've got both of those options checked. So the resizing circle is this thin circle that encompasses the active font. I can click and drag to change the size of my fonts. And I've got mouse wheel resizing, and I do have a wheel on my mouse, so I can just hover over a thought and use my mouse wheel to resize to best fit my screen. But in addition to this outline view, I'll go into uh, my viewing and go into a new expanded view. So here is my work thought. Over here is business development. Marketing falls down here. Operations over here. Let's say I want to also view my sales. That's very important. I'll expand that. Lots going on in sales. And finally, customer service. I'll click and drag. So notice, wherever I'm clicking and dragging a thought, I hope the 
uh, screen resolution and the bandwidth is all keeping up so you can see in real time what I'm clicking and doing. But I'm just dragging in expanded view thoughts where I want them to appear on the screen, hover over a thought and click on the plus. And once again, if you have the screen real estate, you can just simply click on the plus and minus up above. So I can click on minus to sort of con contract and go right back to the thought I started on. And I can just click, click on the plus one by one. And you can see really quickly it starts expanding one by one. And if you've got the room, you've got the real estate, you can really set up a view to monitor and visualize every thought in your entire brain on a obviously on a much bigger screen and of course I can you still use those minimizing features to make things fit but it's a really nice way after you've done some brainstorming another process another brainstorming process and that's sitting back and overviewing what do I have what needs more focus what needs less attention etc and I'm always going into my brains and when I go into expanded view I can sit back and look at the structure and decide how I either want to make some changes or readjust my focus and say, hey, I'm really going to concentrate on this one area of my brain of the project that I'm working on that needs some more attention. So just another really great, great tool for you, for you to utilize in your process of brain idea generation and most importantly, idea execution to get more done in your brain. And I think that's really everything that I wanted to cover today. We still have a few minutes open for some questions. So I'm going to ask Patrick to uh, rejoin and see if we have any open questions, features that we'd like to review here in the brain. Great. Yes, we do have a couple of questions. Um, first of all, uh, the, the first question is asked by Dave. He wanted to know how he... Uh, how you maintain a single thought per person and have like many characterizations, associations, how would you base your thought type choice based on the people that you have in your brain? Sure, sure. There's a couple of different ways that I do that. That's a great question. And that's typically something that I always cover on my brain 101 classes. Um, the most important thing, and let's come back to just normal view here. So I'm going to go back to my view. Oops, not sync. Sorry my view and say normal view. And let's say I'm working on that project for my HR manual. So I'll return back to that thought. And if you remember, I typed in Vicki Waters. Let's say also helping me with this is going to be Barbara. I typed in the letter B and I have a list of all thoughts that contain the letter B. Is your This is your first sort of uh, step in or to, the, to answer that question. Number one, you only want one thought for a person. Uh, because if I were to create, yes, here's Barbara Powers. If I were to type in a new Barbara Powers thought, I have two thoughts for Barbara Powers in my brain, I might go to the wrong one in the future. I'll leave a note on one Barbara Powers thought, but not the other. I go to the wrong Barbara Powers thought in the future. I can't find what I'm looking for. It's going to either lead to confusion or uh, I'm going to have to retype it, duplication I'm into now. It's going to be a mess. I only want one thought for each person, and everything that they're related to is going to be displayed as a link. So let's say it's, uh, I don't want to choose Barb, I want to choose uh, Becky. So I'll double click on Becky. So there's Becky. She reports to Jack. Uh, Jack reports to Barb, so that all works out great. But Becky is also working on our ad or our media blitz, as well as uh, graphics for AT&T. So here's the second part of uh, of your answer. First, one thought for each individual person. Now, how do you decide? Uh, Becky is a manager. So this is a business brain. I'm always going to put the title uh, of the person. It doesn't need to be that way. I've got other brains where um, I have people actually categorized either as friend, uh, family, or what have you. I've got a couple of different categorizations. And, and it really just depends on you, how you want to uh, classify that particular friend. Um, you could even go so far as to say this is a best friend, this is a medium friend, this is an acquaintance. 
I've seen those brains created before. It's fine. It's, it's your brain and it's, it's your organic data going in to be a reflection of your own onboard brain. But you can also classify items this way, and this is something I really like to share and that I didn't point out today. But we can also specify the relationship between two thoughts. So maybe Becky is also on my softball team. Um, so she is a manager of my softball team. I'm going to click on this link between them. Notice just when I click on a link between two thoughts, it grays everything out and it highlights just the link between Becky and softball team. You can leave attachments on links and actually have notes on links to further define the relationship. I'm not defining Becky. I'm not defining my softball team. I'm defining the relationship between Becky and my softball team. Uh, and you can do that, like I said, with the notes down below, or in this case, I'm just going to right click and say edit the link. She manages. Oops, I clicked on edit thought. Let me do that, change that. So right click, edit link, manages. So she manages, and let me make the fonts a little bigger so you can see that, manages my softball team. She's the art director for the Media Blitz. So once again, I go in to edit the link, art. And if I want to edit this further, let's bring the tool tabs up from down below. This is really neat. I'm going to click on the link. So I'm highlighting the link between Media Blitz and Becky Winters. And now notice that my thought tool tab changes to a link tool tab. So I'm defining the link, not the thought. I can change the color. So let's make that really stand out. So that's orange. And I can even make links. Here we're getting into a whole other ball of wax, one directional. So this person manages this person or this person oversees this project. I can check one way or toggle the arrows just so I can visually see the arrows. And it's animated too. So I can see when I'm hovering over Becky Winters, she's the art director for the Media Blitz. A lot of different options for you to play there. A lot of different ways to categorize those people and their responsibilities within your brain. Great. Another question from Oronto is, um, how can you link to other brains from, from within a brain? And maybe also oh, sure. uh, like shortcuts to brains, like a brain Absolutely. Button. Absolutely. So that's a great question, and that happens from time to time. Um, you know, there's, there's two schools of thought in the brain. We get this question a lot. Oh, shall I create one brain with all my in visual information, whether it's business or personal? Or shall I create topic-specific brains? There's no right or wrong answer. So we've got uh, the founder of the brain, Harlan Hugh, has one massive brain, um, uh, pun intended. <laughs> He's a smart guy, but he also has one brain, personal information, family information, work information. It all goes into that brain. So he's got one-stop shopping. He does a search. He can find all the content, et cetera. It's really, really great and powerful. I like to have topic-specific brains. So when I'm demoing, I'm not demoing a brain with client information and passwords and things like that. So that's one of the reasons. And I just jump from brain to brain depending on the topic. <clears throat> but from time to time, let's say Becky also is just a genius with Volkswagen bus restoration. So I am going to, here in my business brain, I'm going to right-click Becky uh, Winters. I am going to select the option to... Uh, scroll down. Where is it? I'm looking over it. Create duplicate, copy text, copy. There it is. Copy local thought URL. So any thought in your brain, you can copy the local thought URL. So I'll do that. That's on my clipboard. Now I'm going to change brains. I'll even change thoughts. So I click away from Becky in this brain. I go into my lower bloom brain and VW, I've got a little link to Riverwest Automotive who is my mechanic, and some information down below. But I'll also create – actually, I don't even need to create the thought. I can just right-click, paste thought URL, Becky Winters. I'll leave some notes on Becky down below. VW Expert. I'm going to come back and delete this later because this is my real brain. But I've created a link between two brains. And from brain one, I can – to Becky Winters. I could have also grabbed a thought here in this brain, copied it, pasted it under, underneath Becky. So from Becky, I can easily get to the VW brain. Uh, but in this case, Becky Winters, I click, 
And it does what the brain does with any attachment. It opens that attachment in its native application. So that is a thought in a database that is opened in the brain. And here, remember, when I left this brain, I was on another thought. It doesn't take me just to the brain. It takes me to a specific brain in a thought. So that is the feature for copying local thought URL. There's other features as well. You can merge two brains together, or you can actually segment brains into, if you've got one master brain, you want it to be two, you can copy a group of thoughts and uh, segment it into separate brains. Those are some more advanced features. We've got video tutorials on how to do that. And if you'd like to know about that, that's a whole other class, so to speak. Um, we can send you some video tutorials on, on that process. But that's the quick way of linking uh, one thought into another brain with that copy local thought URL. Excellent. So uh, Dennis has a question about uh, local files. Can they be taken from a shared server location and then synchronized, updated periodically? So maybe quickly going over the differences between uh, internal file versus a linked file in the brain and the syncing process between those. Absolutely. So once again, there's a lot of different options there. You may have noticed earlier uh, the default, and I'll just say Becky is working on these these files. The default, when you drag and drop, let's say she's working on our project overview. I click and drag project overview right in, and that creates a shortcut to that file. Now that shortcut is just here on my local C drive. That could have been on my Z drive. If I'm VPNed in the, into the office, I've got a Z drive, I can just drag and cr drop right into the brain as well. And it shows you the path on the thought. So this is a nice, simple, short path colon slash e solutions that's where this project overview resides you can have a really long path there and you can even have a URL so a lot of people link to files that are in Dropbox or um, or OneNote or what have you those are all URL based um, file locations Google Drive if you're storing your files in Google Drive each individual file has its own URL once again you can copy that's typically you go in through the share button to find the URL for an online document and paste that as a URL right into the brain. Click, launch, and it's going to open that, that particular file. Um, now, since this is just a shortcut, if this file changes at any time, so outside of the brain, I open up my project overview, and this is just a sample document, so there's nothing here yet. This is my project overview. So I'll save that. Doesn't ask me where I want to save it to. It's saved right there on my C drive. Now we're going back over to the brain and I'm launching this, this attachment. This is my project overview. So it's just a shortcut to an existing file. Um, again, you have those options of moving the files into the brain or copying them into the brain. If you copy it in, then you've got two copies. If you change copy number one, it's not going to be reflected over here in copy number two. So Again, the choice is yours, how you want to manage that information. I personally always choose to, and I'll do that for this file, I right click, I move that file into the brain. So all my files are in the brain. The reason why I do that is because then I can sync my brain to the cloud, access my, my brains online, synchronize my brains between multiple machines, and even access my brain from my iPhone uh, or an Android device uh, with our mobile apps. We've got mobile apps available. Um, you can find the link on our website at www.thebrain.com to link directly to the download pages for our mobile apps as well. So that's why I like the internal applications, but the shortcuts work as well if that is what is needed in your environment. And Great. I think we're right on the hour, but Patrick, did we have any more questions? No, I think that pretty much covers it. Fantastic. Well, thank you everyone so much for, for joining us today. This is sort of a unique topic, um, one that I particularly like uh, just because I am a fan of the GTD methodology and focusing all of my brainstorming so that it not only gets there into my brain, but comes to fruition and, and it gets completed because of the different steps that I utilize to keep track of that information in the brain and move my brainstorming through a natural process. Um, I want to remind everyone that the brains that you saw today, everyone except my own personal brain, they're all available. They're on our website at www.thebrain.com apps, APPS. There's some downloads there. 
and we can also utilize the templates. You can create a new brain or even an existing brain, you can import a brain template or when you're creating a new brain from scratch, file, new brain, you can utilize these brain templates. And the first one that I started out with today was that brainstorming template if you're, you you uh, want to get started with that right away. And uh, with that, um, uh, Patrick, any last words of wisdom to share with our uh, our attendees today? Uh, check out our, our Brain 101 if you haven't. We have a class every Friday. And uh, we, if you have any other questions that we haven't been able to cover today, always feel free to give, uh, give us an email at support at the brain .com. You can give us a call. And then we also have chat available on our website. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And most importantly, enjoy your brain. Bye, everyone. Bye.